let's just to chat about a bunch of random things that are on my mind and on my heart. I know people, but that doesn't mean they know me. You feel what I'm saying? What do you, what do you have to tell me? Like, what is this? Who are you, right? That kind of a friend? Uh-uh, it ain't gonna work for me. What? Mm-mm, excuse me, mm-mm. I don't care, you know, like, ah. Let's play in some makeup because I have errands to run and I want to look nice and I just felt like chatting with you. So we're going to chit chat and play in some makeup. I'm using my makeup kit that's usually in my studio, which I do in air quotes because I film all over the house these days. As you already know, if you are not new. So in order to get some wear out of this particular makeup case, I just switched it with the one I had in the bathroom, right? It makes the most sense. I'm going to start off with this Laura Mercier translucent honey powder. You should already know what that looks like. <laughs> if not, you're going to see me apply some to my face. It's so strange looking at this kit right here because it's not the one I normally use. So I'm like looking for the brushes that I'm used to using. And these obviously aren't them. This is a Sigma Soft Blend 60 brush. And let's just chit chat about a bunch of random things that are on my mind and on my heart. One of which is, and I actually wanted to do a full video on this because I've written down a few things, but I haven't done that yet. And I don't want to really go off of that today. I want to just chit chat. So we'll talk about a few, a few of the same things that I put on discussing in that video. But as I get older, right, approaching 40 years old in my mature years, I'm using this powder to prime my face, but not really, to mattify a little bit, but I'm not expecting high power mattification from this. I just wanna put something down, you know? I'm just putting something down, girl. And this is Lancome Tanti Dual Ultra Wear 555 Suede. As I get older and I'm approaching 40, I'm a lot more clear and I have been clear on this for some time, but it has become even clearer to me as I've become more seasoned. This is a Sigma flat Kabuki brush, it's F80, that I am really and truly a loner. You know, a few friends is really all that I need. And when I say few, I mean like two or three. Three is even a lot. You know what I am? And it really is my personality type. I've alluded before I feel like to the idea that even when I was growing up, I had a, a tight group of friends and they would say that they felt like I was really private. I wouldn't share much until it was said and done or what have you. And that was true because I just don't like a lot of chit chat. Clearly I chit chat in order to do my job. You feel what I'm saying? But I don't like to just sit and chit chat about the same old thing again and again. Like, don't y'all get tired? Like, is that not exhausting? I just like meaningful things. The things that I do, the conversations that I have, gotta be meaningful. Otherwise I feel very uncomfortable. I feel like I need to just do something different. I just cannot stay in this place. So with this idea of meaningful conversations, meaningful things, just living a more meaningful life come with a smaller set of people that I keep around me. I mean, granted, I know people, but that doesn't mean they know me. You feel what I'm saying? In my life's research in growing and living and wanting to just be better at, at lots of different things, right? It's important to learn what your role is in the lives of other people. So I've learned, and I feel like this is where I feel comfortable as well because I don't I don't just open up to just anybody. Jaclyn Hill Deep Rich Golden Concealer. Normally in my position, I am the helper in my friendships and in my relationships. I'm normally the one giving advice, helping, being a bigger sister, playing the parental figure. I rarely am in the position where I'm being helped. In fact, it's normally the other way around or in some cases it's been a mutual thing, which is always nice. And when I say that, really what it is is I don't have a mentor or ment mentors, which I recognize is a problem for me because for me, growth is important. And of course, why not learn from those who are older, more seasoned? I don't find value in learning from anyone my age or close to my age unless you've got life experiences that I have not had. Then in that case, I'm like, girl, let me know what's going on. How did you do X, Y, Z? So I, that is definitely something that I've been praying about because it's important to have a mentor or mentors because like, come on. I mean, granted, thank God I am a seeker of knowledge. I am going to grow regardless. I am going to want to be better regardless. I don't just sit around and get spoon fed. That's not been me. It's never going to be me. But I do recognize that it would be great if I had someone to pour into me, another woman who was older, more seasoned, more experienced. That's definitely something that I'm praying about. I think about myself as a friend. I'm normally the helper. I normally don't lean on people because number one, it's not comfortable for me at all. We talked about this in my confidence video, being parentified and just doing a lot when I was younger. It was always me helping. So to seek help, 
help from somebody else is not a comfortable place for me. Granted, the thing is, I've been in therapy for two years now, almost going on three. So, okay, let's add that to it. I mean, she's not my friend, she's my therapist. So yes, that is a place where I seek sound advice. I'll seek sound advice, but I can't lie. With my personality, it's more so like, what do you what do you have to tell me? Like, what is this? Who are you, right? <laughs> Call it what you want, okay? I've been saying to myself because I was actually watching, I forget what it was, you know, I like to seek further knowledge through podcast books, what have you, different videos online. And I forget what it was that I was watching or listening to, but it talked about basically having mentors. And these can be people that have actually taken you on to be like, yes, I'll mentor you. Or it literally can be people that don't even know who you are. They don't know you exist, but I would be studying that person or these people and gleaning from them. That I think is one of the best ways to glean and learn from people. And I've mentioned this years ago on IG and I wanna say it here. That is a great way to glean from people. And I know, I mean, people used to tell me back in the day, it's been a while, the LYS No Limits Bronzer worthy. People used to tell me but it's been a while now but that they would be in a way following my every move and you know just learning from what I'm doing and so forth and that I think is number one admirable and number two it really is the best way to go you know is there someone in your life who or not in your life or just online who is living the way you want to live growing the way you want to grow going the direction you want to go in why not glean from that person and really take note of the books they're reading what they're doing they want to come Conferences, their their habits, whatever they're doing to achieve the kind of life that they have, that would be the smartest thing to do. Wiping off excess now to blend. I'm reminded about how pigmented this is, girl. Woo wee. Okay, this highlight and contour is throwing me off because I don't normally use these products. I'm looking very golden because the color of the <laughs> the concealer. Woo! All right, here we go. So along with that is this idea that I'm okay with, which is for some people they would consider me not to be a good friend, and I'm okay with that because I am in no way, shape or form a people pleaser. If I know that someone doesn't like me, I never go out of my way to make that person like me. I don't even care, literally. The idea that I could be considered not a good friend is fine with me. I really don't care. And let me explain why. We all have a personality type, right? And with my personality, I am a very low maintenance person. This is platonic friendships, by the way. We're not talking about romantic, but even in romantic, I'm pretty low maintenance as well. But in platonic relationships, I am low maintenance, meaning if we talk every few months, I'm good. If we talk sparingly, I'm good. I'm good with whatever that friendship will give me. I'm not nor have I ever been the kind of friend to be like, oh, now you want to call me? Oh, okay, so now you want to, like, what? Because <laughs> here's the thing. While you haven't called me for God knows how long, I've been busy also. You feel me? I got things to do. I got goals. I'm doing things each day. My mind is set on higher things that I do not even have the time nor the capacity or the energy or the interest to think about what friend has or has not called me. We have or have not hung out in so long. Oh, okay, you out here with so-and-so and you haven't seen me, like what? Mm -mm. Now, if that is your personality, then so be it. And this is what I mean by for someone who is that way, they might see me as not being a good friend because they might see me as a friend like, oh, okay, so you ain't call me. Oh, you didn't even invite me. I saw you were out with so-and-so. You didn't call me. That kind of a friend? Uh-uh. It ain't gonna work for me. It does not work for me. I don't do high maintenance, none of that stuff. Uh-uh. Okay, listen, I love me a good outfit, a good jewelry, a good everything in that sense of high maintenance, yes. But in the terms of emotional high maintenance, no ma'am. I do have a lot of emotions. I'm a woman for God's sake, you know? But that, mm -mm. again, I'm talking about platonic friendships, not loving type relationships. That is not what I'm talking about. Uh-uh, I don't see friendships like that. Now I am, of course, the friend who will reach out, check on you, what have you, but it might be a few weeks. It might be a few months, depending on our relationship. It might not be ever, right? But that doesn't mean that there's beef. It just means that I'm not on that tip. You feel what I'm saying? My phone rings and I know that it's one of four or five people. My phone does not ring much. I don't get many text messages. You feel what I'm saying? I don't have many conversations with people and it doesn't mean that there's beef. It just means that we're just doing different things and I'm okay with that. I find that for some people, there's this pressure. I'm trying to find my, my products. There's this pressure of, oh yeah, you know. And I do feel like this is a very young, 
strong and mature mindset. I haven't had anyone tell me that as of late. So I wanna say that this is an immature type thing. This is one size bronze sculpt trio. I remember this being very deep and good. I'm gonna do the middle one. And this is the Sephora 59 brush. I don't feel like mature grown people are talking that way. But comment and let me know what you think about that. Cause maybe you've had someone at your big age behaving that way. Like, oh, I saw you went to so and so you didn't invite me. Oh, you know, you don't call me no more. Like what? Mm-mm, excuse me, mm-mm, no. I don't have time to be holding the hand of a grown-up. You feel what I'm saying? Now, that as a soundbite sounds horrific, and I get that, but the fact is, those who call me a friend know that when they need me, I'm there. Those who call me a friend, ooh, this is pretty stark, know that I would like to believe, and I would be shocked if they said I wasn't a good friend. So I say that with a smile because if they say that, they're being, they're being petty. <laughs> If they say that, they're being petty because they're saying it perhaps because we don't talk a lot, you know? But it's not like, oh yeah, we are in communication and she's a terrible person. Like, I need you to show me some receipts on that. You feel what I'm saying? So uh, I say this because I think it's an interesting conversation to have at this big age, at my big age, because it's like, are people holding other grown adults with calendars and schedules responsible for filling their emotional needs? My friends are not responsible for filling my emotional needs, nor is anyone else in my life. And I learned that many years ago. I learned it the hard way because lo and behold, I was given a little bit of codependency. You feel what I'm saying? Okay, this is giving very warm today. Jesus, lamb. This is rich 610C camo, but I don't think this is for me. Jesus, hold on. Uh-uh. This is what I used to use? Get out of here. That's not gonna work for me. Uh, hold on. I mean, that's what I was using. I guess I'll use it today. <laughs> I'm gonna change this powder. But you know, I was given codependency and I didn't realize it until it just wasn't working. <laughs> you know, like it just wasn't working. So I had to pivot. And I also recognize that I don't like when people put that burden on me either. So anyway, I'm not even sure if that went in a full circle, but that is, those are my thoughts on that. I could be considered to not be a good friend to some people and I really don't care because I know the kind of person I am and my personality and I don't do hand holding. This sounds so bad. But I just, I'm low maintenance and I like low maintenance friendships. Listen, I'll cry at the drop of a dime because I, I feel what people feel, friend or not. But I also, I don't like a lot of foolishness. I don't like the buffoonery. I don't like just to be sitting on the phone for nothing. You know, I like all of that. You feel what I'm saying? Whatever we're doing has to be meaningful. If the, if we're talking on the phone for two hours, it's, it's a real meaningful, deep conversation and I'm there. Like I'm all in, all ears, all of the stuff. But it's just all the frivolous everyday, like what you doing, 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 like what? I'm so busy running a business. <laughs> The family, you know, so can't do it. And that's what I mean by that. I'm also at a point in my life, this is the same deep chestnut concealer, that I don't care if I don't get invited to things. I'm fine going to things on my own. I'm just fine. I'm I'm content with myself, in myself. And I don't feel like I need to be included in order to feel worthy of anything. And then we talked about this before. I may not have been included because it was an oversight. I may not have been included because the person forgot. I always try my best to assume the best because assuming that something was done intentionally is not only exhausting, Exhausting, but a complete waste of my time because then what again I am comfortable in who I am and what I do that I don't care about a lot of things and I don't say that and then secretly envy or hate the person mm -mm, I literally don't give a crap and with that I do what I feel is best for me and I don't care about what someone else will think about it granted is I'm not talking about doing something that will affect someone so greatly and then being like oh I don't care I'm gonna do me no what I'm saying is I'm unapologetically clear on who I am and what my purpose is in this life so much so that I do not care if while in pursuit of my purpose I step on someone's toes literally doesn't concern me I don't feel like I need to be included on everything invited to everything I don't care you know like ah. <laughs> Oh, and another thing too, at my big age, at my big age, when I travel, I need my own room and I will pay for it. Unless, you know, so I 
mean, I've, I've, I've had roommates. Like, I have friends, we roomed, right? But listen, I will pay for my own room just out of sheer convenience because what don't I do is foolishness. I like my peace and quiet. I like things the way I like my things. And I travel with a lot, you know this. So when I travel, and let's say I wanna get up and film or do whatever, I need my peace and quiet to do that, you know? And I never feel guilty like I have to invite someone to something, include someone on something. If I decide that this something is going to be for this group of people and it does not include maybe someone else or whatever, you know, they're like, I, I'm not giving you an exact example because I don't have one in particular, but just in, in essence, you know, there are people and you might be that person who may feel like, oh, let's say birthday party. Oh, that party. Oh, I have to invite so-and-so and so-and-so because if I don't, it'll be a problem. Well, a problem for a problem for you or is it a problem for that person? Because if it's not a problem for me, but it's a problem for him or her, then it's not a problem. You know, Th this is what I'm talking about. I don't have time to think about what somebody thinks about me or what they think about what I'm doing. And with that said, I'm about to make a decision very soon. That is for me, myself and I, and I don't care what anybody has to say about it. All right, I'm gonna use this Tarte Cosmetics Tarte Lip Palette. It is available. I hate when I be trying to do a video and then y'all be like, it's discontinued or whatever, sold out or whatever. I'm like, oh my God. So yes, it is available. Links will be below as always. Follow me on all socials. So let's do an eyeshadow look with this. It's been a while. I'm gonna give you a nice neutral look. Also note that I did do a broken down, step-by-step -step detailed eyeshadow tutorial. It is a standalone video. So you can literally play it into your eyeshadow all while watching that video. This is the Soft Ochre Matte Paint Pot. So whenever I used to say Painterly Paint Pot from MAC, it was a paint pot and the shade is Painterly. So if that confused you, there is your clarification there. Okay, this is Soft Ochre, just as good. Just the shade is different. Okay, now we're in business. This is the shade Cozy. And this is the shade Latte on the eyelid. All right, I just threw on my headband wig because I didn't feel like doing anything in my face right now. I don't have anything else to say on the topic. I actually lost my train of thought, but hopefully you learned a thing or two with the eyeshadow look. This lip is so fiery and spicy and tomatoey and saucy and orangey. I love it. All links are below. I'm gonna link two video options for you to choose from. Watch another video, stick around. Let me know below what your thoughts are on the topics that I discussed and I'll see you. Bye.